Oh, hi. Oh, we're live. Colorful circle <laughs> is moving. That circle terrifies me. Especially when the little red dots go around yeah. it. It's like, oh my gosh. What does that mean exactly? I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know if the app is saying, hey, trying to keep up or yeah. if it's the internet being like, we're too slow. Speaking of circles, have you seen the reality show, The Circle? I have not. I've seen like okay. ads for it. I know. You should watch kind it. Of what it. Okay. Yeah, it's very up your alley, I feel like. Do you think I would do well on it? Oh my God. Actually, yes, I do. Should I go? Should okay, I? Well, the Spice Girls are on it right now. Wait, so what? They have, oh my gosh, wait, Adina, Jess, if you're listening. Mm. If they're listening. listening. <laughs> they're always listening. Um, I think they've tapped my house. You probably. By yeah. the way, this is my managers we're talking about. <laughs> I, <laughs> I suspect that I'm being listened to always. Oh, hi, Luna. Do you want to? Do you want to? Oh, my uh, gosh. You guys, she is being so cute right now. She literally crossed her little feet and yeah. like put her hand on her. It's like we're on the view right now. And she's one of the. Yeah. Um, she's Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> Isn't Sharon on the. I think she was at one oh, point. Maybe I don't that's know. a long time ago. I, to be honest, I'm I don't dated. listen to the view. I'm dated in my view knowledge. <laughs> but you should. I, I'm dead serious. Not only should you watch The Circle, but I actually think that you would excel at being on The Circle. Because, yeah. yeah, don't you have to make an online persona, but no one knows who you are? You can either be you or you can catfish. You get the choice of doing one or oh. the other. Well, yeah. I couldn't be myself. I'd well, have, you could be. It wouldn't be fair. So Lance Bass's <laughs> assistant went on and pretended she was Lance. And then the Spice Girls are on right now, and they're pretending to be some random guy that, like, the show made up for them. Right. Yeah. Like, I feel like if you have an online presence already, like the Spice Girls yeah. or, you know, like, <clears throat> Lindsay Sterling, like a super <laughs> famous person like that, um, I feel like you kind of have to yeah. make up a person. Well, there is a TikTok person. star on right now, and he's himself. Oh, he's He came on, he's like, I've got 3.7 million followers. And I was like, okay, all right. All right. Well, I don't know who you are. Brat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on TikTok and I have no idea who you are. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, no, I'm just kidding. TikTok yeah. stars are real stars too. Well, you start watching it. Season one's probably my favorite so far out of all of them. So tell me what you think. Okay. Report back. All right, I'll report back. Where do I watch such thing? I, I think it's on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu. Hulu, okay. Yeah. It's got to be because I don't watch Netflix anymore. So it's oh, be well, okay. Is this yeah. like a statement? or? Well, it, it wasn't, but I can make it one. Like that felt very like, oh, Netflix. Well, I'm mad at them. I guess I'm a little disappointed in, in Netflix's like, you know, they do that thing where they like have a show for two seasons and then they cancel it even if like the storyline's not done. And I guess that irks me. They have mm. like a huge library of unfinished shows. Rude. Yeah. And I guess I'm just not impressed with their library anymore. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a subtle statement. It's not like yeah. Netflix did anything to like, re like your well, neighbor isn't the owner of Netflix. And they're also, you know, what, shrub they, grows over your, your fence. Now your that back. you're bringing this up, I'm thinking about it more. And I, I you know what? No, I am spicy at Netflix right oh, now. Okay. They just raised their prices and they're not letting people. Wait, they like, raised their prices? Yeah. Dang it, you know what? It's like you have these subscriptions to things I, and I totally miss the notification yeah. saying by the way you're paying double yeah. and then all of a sudden like a year later I'm like what the heck yeah. I've been paying double yeah. I'm one of those people that what did I get for this money yeah, yeah. I mean I've been watching Netflix a lot lately well, then you're, you're um because I I'm not watching their news shows but I okay guys I rediscovered TV in 2020 I never watched TV really like it just was never a habit and now I have a terrible habit. And so no, I'm, it's a good habit. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a good habit. I'm catching up on the shows. I, sh I think I might've yeah. mentioned this already. I'm catching up on all those shows. I should have watched as a teenager. And mm, actually I want to ask our guests today. So um, we're not bringing it on quite yet, but um, we have Lynn or Lindsay is her name. So we're yeah. actually going to have like triple Lindsay's, but luckily she goes by Lynn um, and she's from the band Paris. Oh my gosh, they are so good. So I'm so excited to like have her on. And apparently she's like really into like astrology and she's always been very fascinated with death. And so I'm like, oh, I wonder if she also watches Vampire Diaries yeah. or did when she was a teenager and when it yeah. was like a cool show to watch. I mean, that's one of my favorite topics to talk about and listen to. So I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah. I love that stuff. Oh my gosh. Dang it. I just realized I don't really have a question about it, but maybe I'll just like try to steer yeah. the conversation. Like, yeah. how do you feel about death? <laughs> that's I mean like that's subtle. The most, that's the most like straightforward way. Oh. Like, how, how, do you speak to ghosts? Like, yeah, you know? like, like tell me about your favorite in supernatural death story. And, yeah. Oh my gosh, I used to like break the ice at parties. That oh way. my gosh, so, like I would. I mean, I. Would, <laughs> I don't know. 
awkward <laughs> with like meeting new people and kind of gauge whether or not they were going to have a friendship with me by asking them, you know, what their favorite murder was or like, yeah. have you heard about the people who have passed away at theme parks or stuff like that? And, you know, if they were like, you're weird, then I found someone else. But if they were like, oh my God, let me talk to you about this. Yeah. We, we're still friends to this day. You know, someone once told me like, you take your freak flag and you raise it as high as you possibly can and wave yep. it as big as you can because yep. that's the only way you're going to find the other freaks. Yep. You know, because we're all our own version of weird. I, I say this all the time and it's like, what's yeah. the point of like kind of trying to like subtly be cool yeah. and fit in because like, you know, the day you want to find your other weird people. Also, I think the only thing worse than coming right out of the door being weird is pretending not to be weird, <laughs> making friends with people, and then suddenly being like, by the really way, weird. I'm very odd. <laughs> and everyone's like, who are you? Also, yeah. like, what kind of misery does that set up for yourself, yeah. pretending to be this, like, person, yeah. and then being like, oh, gosh, I'm not going to keep my yeah. friends if Absolutely. they if they know that I'm obsessed with theme park yeah. deaths. <laughs> I actually, I have a very that's good fish, friend. by the way. That is me. That, that's totally me. I have a very good friend who did that to our friend group. She acted completely normal for the first couple years of us being friends, and I even gave her a job job recommendation. Um, she's a 911 operator now. And when they called to, to yeah, you know, I was a reference. And when they called me, I said, Oh, she's the most responsible one of our group. Like she is just a really well, well to do person. Like we all respect her. She's the most trustworthy one. And then she raised her weird flag. And I realized that I had recommended somebody for a job that oh. probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, that's probably how Drew feels about you. Yeah, probably. Drew recommended fish for this job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did. Yeah, he was like, she's great. She's chill. She's not weird at all. Well, gosh. three years later, here we Four are. Years later, Four years actually. later. Oh my gosh. Count. We don't count 2020. No, that definitely counts for us, though, because I feel like we did a lot together. That's when we you did. and I became like yeah, what we, we, we are. We suffered together, but in like a great way. Hi, can I help you, Luna? Luna's like Hi. wanting something from fish. Hi. What do you want, baby do you, girl? Do you want, I don't have a shirt that you can crawl in. Do you want? No, nope. like okay. is looking at you so oh, no. forlorn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, before we have uh, Lynn come on, I think maybe we'll play a song. Yeah, I let's think do that it. Good. I've been listening to their music. I mean, I love Paris. I think they are such a cool band. I've literally known of them for years, and so I'll, I'll probably gush more when Lynn is on. But um, yeah, so I want to play. This is from uh, I think two albums ago. Um, All we know is heaven, and it's what's wrong. That's that's the name of the song. Sorry, nothing <laughs> nothing's wrong. I know that's, that's very the name of the song. Very typical on the show for me to say, oh shoot, what's wrong? But no, what's wrong is the name of the song. All right, such a good song. I've literally been listening to their music all like day in prep, or even all all this week. I've been like kind of yeah. just jamming through their songs and. They've got so much good music. Yeah. Like, and it's amazing how from album to album, like very different sounds, but still very her, which I just respect so much in, in an artist. It's really hard to kind of do that fine line of yeah. reinventing yourself, but also like staying true to who you are as an artist and your sound. Um, but yeah. anyways, such a good song. Um, I don't want to talk like too much about her before she comes on because... Then I'll have to repeat myself, you know. Yeah. But um, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. I do that enough in my normal conversations <laughs> with friends. <laughs> I feel like on that on that topic, though, um, you know, I feel like you've been really exploring that lately, like writing new music and still staying true to your sound and what your you know fans love, and at the same time yes. growing a lot. Yes. Yeah. I'm in that that spot now of like really trying to figure out like what is this new album going to yeah. sound like and um. It is a fine, fine balance yeah. and really hard to do. That's why all the more so I'm like so impressed as I was listening yeah. through her music of just being like, she really has a good knack for yeah. finding that line, always reinventing herself. And with no further ado, wait, nope, that's not. Just kidding. You almost got me. <laughs> I, almost, I almost brought in somebody else. Their name starts with a P and is about the same number of syllables. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, in it. That's, that's tricky. With my dyslexia, I would have fully been like, welcome to the show. Ah, there we go. But wait, here she is. So I'm going to invite um, Lynn in right now. And again, I'm really excited because this is like the Lindsay trifecta. We've had this once before. Yeah. Where we had three Lindsays. And this just goes to show like, 
Yeah. I mean, Lindsay's it's a very common name. name. Yeah. It's a fantastic name. And I, I, I think it just, you know, brings us together, unites us even more. So I'm going to wait for Lynn to pop on and also welcome everybody to our show. Thanks for being here today. Yeah. Thanks for spending time with us. Thank you so much for having me. I have never been in a Lindsay sandwich like this. That's really cool. Oh, this is a great Lindsay sandwich. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, growing up, did you always have like three Lindsays in every class? No, there was never. Th I met in my childhood. I only met one other Lindsay up until oh. I was like 18 and started trying. Then I met other Lindsays, but the only other Lindsay that I ever met was on one of my hockey teams when I was in like the third grade, I think. Oh my goodness. Well, actually that might make, that might make a little sense to me because you're about like eight years younger than us two mm -hmm. Lindsay's. We were born like a year apart yeah. and in um, good old late eighties, <laughs> it, <was, laughs> it was the heyday of yeah. the Lindsay's. Yeah. So like every soccer team I was ever yeah. on every class, like, you know, there would be at least yeah. another, I don't know, is that your experience? Yeah. Fish? hundred percent. Yeah. That's, that's definitely, that's my experience too. We had a couple other Lindsay's in my, you know, class growing up and then I didn't see them for a long time until I met you. And oh. now it was from that point, it was like Lindsay's everywhere. I mean, well, we had four on tour at one point. Yeah. One yeah. tour. We literally had four. That's insane. And we're all spelling it differently. Yeah. So I'm very accustomed to, um, everyone jokes that I only hire Lindsay's yeah. and I'm like, that's not true. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, Yes. That is right. Um, so wait, where are you calling in from today? I am in, in Los Angeles today. Oh. Oh my gosh, uh, we should have just had you over. I know. Well, next time. Next time. Yeah. Where okay. I mean actually we shouldn't say where we live, but let's let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where let's do you live? Do it. <laughs> right, here's my address. Um so I just have to just like praise you for a second. I have been a fan of your music for so long like one of my best friends um his name was Gavi he introduced me to your music and he's like one of my favorite people on the planet and he's like this girl is such a rock star and I remember the first song I think I heard was you and I and I just have been a fan for years I love your sound I think you are so genius so anyways just oh, I sing your praises you so that means um, that means so much especially coming from you I've, I've also been a a big fan and have been hearing about you for so long. And I feel like so many of our fans are always like, do you do us in a Lindsay Sterling, Joe? You know, Lindsay Sterling. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. She's fucking dope. So it's really cool to finally get to meet or like meet you via podcast, but hopefully totally in real life. Very soon in real life. Like, I feel like I need to see you in concert too. Cause I just, after listening to your music, I'm like, I can only imagine that your show would be insane. Um, so yeah, I've got to look at your tour dates. Are you going out on tour soon? Um, there's some shows coming up. Like we're playing Riot Fest in September and then One Year Young Festival in October and then some European and UK dates in January. And then there's some that are being booked right now for other things that are coming up that I can't disclose yet. But, okay. So but, it sounds like you guys are gearing up to like start to really, really get into, get into it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on the fourth album right now and just really trying to get it right and taking my time with it. And I think taking a little too long, but I don't think you can ever be too careful. So yeah, all that's yes. kind of coming together. We're at like, I feel like I'm like three quarters of the way through where it's almost done. Things are starting to like really be put in place and stuff like that. Did you say you were working on an album? I'm at like the very baby beginning stages of just even just trying to figure out what my sound is even going to be. And I was, I was just mm -hmm. saying how I, I love, um, what you've done with all of your albums because every album has a very distinctive sound to it. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's still you, but it's, it's unique. And so I actually wanted to ask you, since I'm in that place right now of like, what is my sound right now? How do you find what every album is going to be? How do you find that new, that new piece? Um, great question. I think, I think of the, the biggest thing I've learned from album to album and just kind of from 
the starting point up until now is the number one thing that makes something Paris and feel like Paris. It isn't necessarily the production. It isn't necessarily like anything specific other than like, as long as it has come from my brain lyrically and chord wise, and then like, I am playing the instruments. And I think as long as like my perspective is put on it and I have the initial or like majority of the input on the song, on the production, on the instrumentation, I think it naturally just kind of, it will obviously evolve with different collaborators and obviously tastes changing over time, but like, as long as that foundation and that skeleton of like me being the most hands-on I can with it, I think that naturally kind of just makes it or keeps it as like Paris as possible, I guess. I love that. It kind of takes all that complication out of it of like, you know, what sound or what this, how much of this production, how much of that. And you're just kind of like, well, no, it's like you are Paris. So if you're involved, it's going to be you. Like I, it yeah. makes it so simple mm -hmm. and it makes sense. Yeah. It's been, it's been so interesting. Cause like <clears throat> the, f and it's something I'm kind of like trying to reclaim right now is like the fact that I've kind of been producing since we first started, but I never realized I could call it that or like felt like I could claim that. Um, mm. But like when I first started making music and was in like, even this started in middle school. Cause we had my middle school had like the MacBook computers and I would mm. like totally not do my computer work and I would just go on GarageBand and start making songs and start writing and kind of like sneakily work on music when I was in school. And then after middle school, like we didn't have those computers in our school, but, but my family had like this archaic computer. I don't know what year it was from, but mm -hmm. I downloaded this thing called Guitar <laughs> Pro, which is like basically you have to write in sheet music and you can pick like guitar, drums, bass, strings, all kinds of different instruments. And you write in the parts or you write in the guitar tabs or the actual like composition, however you want to do it. And it will play it for you. Mm -hmm. But it sounds, it sounds like Mario Kart music pretty much. Um, but, like I used to make our songs and like start writing songs through that. And then eventually I saved up and got a computer and started working on GarageBand and then Logic um, or GarageBand. And then I got this program called Reason, which is another like, DAW and then I got Logic but I kind of like was always <laughs> writing and starting songs on the computer or like more on like an electronic level I guess and so yeah then it was like I don't know how I got on this I'm sorry but basically what I'm <laughs> no, saying no it's fascinating yeah. I, I love hearing your process it's cool Thank you. Okay, so I think I remembered what my through line was. So basically, that's kind of how I would started out making music before I was even in a band. I would just like write alone like that. And then once we started working on the first album and the second album, same producer, our process was basically like, I would start something on Logic or Reason, whichever one it was at the time. And then I would send stems to the producer. And then we would kind of come together form formulate the structure add anything to it that might be needed take things out whatever it was and then we would like kind of go over the production and make it more of like a band and more rock sounding mm. um so that's kind of always been like a really important and integral part of what <clears throat> makes paris paris is that component and i think over the years it's kind of just been finding new ways to do that and just new ways to collaborate on doing that and find different contexts of how to like incorporate the electronic elements mixed with the organic and kind of just playing with that dynamic and like finding that happy balance and like playing with minimalism or the opposite, just kind of like making sure those things are always there. And I think, yeah, and it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of just naturally happened that way. So with this, what I'm working on now has kind of been a similar process of just finding new collaborators to do that with and just try and make the best songs possible and then parasify them, I guess. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm so, so impressed. I feel like there are not 
that many women that are quote unquote called producers in this business. Yeah. And I think a lot of us find um, the technology just so intimidating. And I speak for myself saying I am one of those people that's just so intimidated by producing my own music. And, um, you know, and only in the last like, I would say year and a half have I really like finally gotten the courage to get in there and like be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tinker around with this till I understand yeah. it. And, um, but the fact that you've been doing that since you were in junior high is just so, so cool. And, um, you know, and also it's interesting because listening to your music, you guys have such a cool blend between EDM and rock. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like, oh, well, that's, it's probably so much due to the way that you write, you write in kind of yeah. more of a traditional EDM way, and then you put the rock to it. So, um, you know, that's, that's really cool how just your writing process has kind of created this sound. Yeah, um, it's really interesting, too, because I think I see a lot of the time if we drop a new song, there's always some like rock and roll purist that like ex ex accept or expects bands to be like you could record the drums and then the bass and then the guitars and then the vocals and that's it and like yeah. there's there's this like super purist mentality I think just because we kind of came from more of like a rock driven scene there's that mm. mentality that like oh if it's electronic it's bad or it's cheap or it, it like takes away from it or if it's super poppy then it's easy or it's lazy but it's like actually really the opposite but it's always funny when I see occasional comments that are like where are the instruments or like this is too mm. techno and it's or te like they'll use terms like techno or something I'm like okay yeah. <laughs> you actually don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I mean if everybody has their own taste I'm not gonna like nag on anybody for that but it's always interesting when I see those comments because I'm like, huh, it doesn't like to me something or like our music having or the production having like heavier electronic elements to me doesn't make it less Paris. And I, it's always weird when people think that it makes it less Paris or it's like, oh, it's super pop or it's like what happened? It used to be a rock band. It's like, no, electronics have always been very integral to Paris's sound and it's that's like how all of our songs have started has been mm. on a computer using like some kind of synth software or drum loop drum machine whatever it is like that's always been really integral so I always find those comments really interesting and I'm always like I'm the one who puts those there half the time and wants those things so it's it's kind of just funny yeah, you're but, like, this isn't a departure. This is actually who I am. Yeah, Sorry, is, if you don't like actually, it, yeah. I think, I mean, I think part of that confusion is just like early stages of starting out. There's like this pressure to be super rock because that's kind of the only scene and like types of shows and tours that we knew how to like be a part of and, and join mm -hmm. and like do. So there was this like pressure to kind of like really lean into that but there's always a part of me that like loves pop music loves electronic loves hip-hop loves like just pretty like the producing aspect of this so mm -hmm. it's it's been an interesting journey and like a very i feel like paris has always kind of been this weird enigma that people don't know like what where to put it quite yeah yet, I guess. you know but that usually is like my a hundred percent i was I'm just sure. about to say yeah. that like my favorite kind of music, not only the kind of music that I like to make is usually pretty much like, I don't know, what box does this go in? Who knows? It doesn't yeah. really have a place. But also I found the music I like to listen to is always the kind of stuff that bends genres or that crosses yeah. over genres. And it kind of doesn't even have a world because I feel like that's um, super creative music and it's always yeah. pretty unique. And that's the stuff that always catches my ear. And I'm like, what is this? And how did they think of this? And how did they blend these sounds? Like, yeah, so that's, that's my favorite and bread and butter for sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel like we're so sorry. If you can hear a little dog growling in the background, that's Panda. Oh, uh, uh, what kind of dog? Yeah, she's a little Pomeranian. She's my, my partner's and I'm babysitting her for the day. And she's, she's like, mommy's coming home. So I'm going to start <laughs> acting up. <laughs> Love it. 
So you formed a band when you were in high school, if I'm not mistaken, and you guys went under a different name. It was Operation Guillotine. And so I'm so curious, what were the beginning days like this? We're going to go back to the beginning. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like to pretend that it didn't happen, but like, oh, I'm really, we don't have I'm, to talk no, no, about no. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trying, I'm trying to own it now and just like roll with it. I'm going to let Panda out really quick. Oh, no worries. And if it makes okay. you feel better, in high school, I was in a band called Stomp on Melvin. So I will just like out myself <laughs> as well. We all have our beginning days. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a part of the journey. It's very important. Like For sure. Um, but those days were so funny. I basically, my high school band formed when I was, I think, a freshman or a junior. Um from like middle school into high school, I, I was really into doing like jazz band and after school concert band and all types of extracurricular after school music programs, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so I when I got to high school, I was like, I'm gonna do a marching band. Is that so sick? And it was it was so much fun. <laughs> um, but I was on drum line and I met like the drummer from my high school band on drum line. And then our old guitarist played tuba and then through them I met like what our other bass our old bassist and um yeah basically we just would like play in my friend's basement all the time and like practice and rehearse there and this was the time when I was kind of using that program called Reason and then the one called Guitar Pro and like mm -hmm. I would kind of start songs on that and then show it to the group and be like okay we gotta learn these parts this is what the drums are this is what the bass is this is the guitar is and then we kind of like learn it from there and go from there um granted it was <laughs> really bad but it was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> I mean heck yeah it's like I, it's funny because I look back at like yeah my stomp on Melvin Daves and like I even have the album we made and at the time it's just like I thought it was so good like I don't know if you yeah. were under that delusion that like this is um this is freaking awesome like we're going big guys and like looking yeah. at it now you're just like oh that's really embarrassing but cute <laughs> yeah it's so important I think that that stage is so important though and you're just like I'm on top of the world I'm making music with my best friends and like yeah it's so important and it's totally. really important I think to play to like every type of crowd you can play to whether that's like a talent show or to the bartender at a bar and you're the only other ones there that's like you got to do it yes I do think those <laughs> beginning days are like so important it kind of makes you appreciate everything as you grow and yeah. you know and then like you were talking about that stage of like writing music when you're just with your friends and you and everything you write you think is amazing like I almost wish sometimes I could get back to that like innocent phase yeah. where I didn't I wasn't so self-critical of like everything that comes out and I wasn't like you know I, I didn't understand songwriting so structurally like there's a certain freedom yeah. to like those early songs that it's kind of hard to recapture like once you yeah. quote unquote or know your craft better yeah, definitely. There's such like a fun, um, like there's just a fun magic to it at that stage. I remember just just the just being able to like record something, even if it was super shitty on GarageBand and it was like indecipherable mm -hmm. what is happening in the song. It was the yeah. coolest thing to be able to make something and write something and then just hear it back. So like, as bad as like early high school recordings might be you're like well we literally made a song and we can listen to it in the car on the way to school now this is crazy yeah so it's such like a fun thing you know and I think that there's a little bit that you know I, I don't know the the upcoming generation can't quite understand how special that was because um software wasn't available for like everybody everybody didn't know about these tools and these things like nowadays it's I feel like it's so much easier and everybody's got access to these things but you know back in the 90s it was like or I guess in the early 2000s so I'm dating myself here <laughs> the early 2000s it was like a really special unique thing if you're like dude we can record ourselves or like we I can edit yeah. a video um yeah yeah it wasn't <laughs> as easy everybody 
Yeah, it was a little harder, so give us some credit. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk at all about some of your early shows? Like, I don't know if you want to go earlier than this, but I know that like right after high school, you and your band joined Warped Tour. And so mm -hmm. like, what was that like being on Warped Tour, like right out the gate of high school? Or are there other like stories from those early shows that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, it's so funny. I think Warped Tour, we've been touring for a bit when we at the point when we played um, when we did like the full full summer because we did two weeks in 2014 then we did the full summer in 2015 but I just remember it was Warped Tour was just really crazy because it was kind of I think our, our first album was already out I believe mm -hmm. um and at this point we had opened up for like Sleeping with Sirens, Pierce the Veil, Made a Parade. Um, we were just like on a lot of really big and good opening slots of tours at the time from that scene. And like, I just remember there was a lot of hype around us. And I remember we were initially supposed to play the Journey stage, which was basically the split amphitheater stage um, mm. when Warped Tour was happening. And we were like, even just having that slot, we were like, whoa, that's cool. That's like better than the Ernie Ball stage. So we're doing good. And I remember mm -hmm. we would, I think it was like the first couple weeks, we just kept getting bumped up to main stage. Oh, wow. And the, the crowds were always like really big for us. And we were just like, whoa, what is happening? It was kind of just crazy because we, we hadn't even headlined at that point yet. Um, oh, wow. We were still just like, still just opening on different tours and supporting the album and um, kind of just riding with things as they were happening. But yeah, I remember we were, we kept getting bumped up to main stage. And I just remember being like, what the fuck is happening? Cause we were just like, I don't think like we weren't prepared for it at all. And it was just happening, but it was really, really cool. And that's, I remember that vividly and that being so terrifying at the same time yeah and <laughs> so that's like mostly what I remember is being really overwhelmed because I just like we weren't expecting that and for that to have happened so quickly yeah um so it's definitely like crazy but really really incredible and then I also remember having a bike gang and that's Ooh. those are my two mm. biggest memories <laughs> A bike gang Wait, tell me more yeah, back up <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was um it was me and do you know Bo from Buff the Fall I don't know I, well I know the the name of the band but I, I don't okay. know Bo so Bo's the lead singer it was like me and him and some of his crew members and then we kind of had people that would just like alternate in and out but basically all our bike gang was was in the morning before the set times were announced we would just text each other and be like all right I found a Starbucks two miles away we're gonna bike to it and then blah 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 or like depending on what our set times were for the day we'd be like okay I'm playing at four you're playing at two we're gonna go to Starbucks at seven there's one five miles away there's also a theme park right next to it we're gonna go there after and we would just make all these little plans like once we were done playing and we would just adventure around on our bikes Oh, that's super fun. Um, I, I will say that like on tour, I've always wished that we had room in the under bays for like several bikes because I do yeah. love. Hey, can we start a bike gang? I mean, yeah. we used to do it on days oh off sometimes. Gosh. We would go on a, a bike gang. One of our tour members, Alec, he has one of those like wheels. We, oh my we just call it the wheel. It's like that little skateboarding thing. I have thing. the biggest scar on mm -hmm. my ankle from four years ago from falling off that thing the wheel absolutely it's dangerous <laughs> yeah okay we'll stick to a bike gang um I can bike. <laughs> but yeah that I think that's one of the magical things about tour is when you can find those little windows of yeah. time and then uh, go on a little adventure like yeah sometimes it's, yeah. it's more trouble than it's worth but most of the time it's like it always leads to like great stories and like yeah. just the, the best memories and now I need to have a bike gang on a yeah. tour it's, it's official you can always do like scooters like razor scooters okay yeah, now, scooters we're, now we're talking yeah. Yeah. yeah we could that a bunch of scooters we could fit yeah. that in the bus that'd be intimidating those are much more easy street. to make compact and yes and yeah I think yeah. that's a great plan they're just and if there if there were other, if there were like other gangs in the area, yeah. they'd know we were rolling in. They'd yeah. be like, "We heard of these guys. They mean business. Yeah. Look out! It's the Sterling tour." <laughs> <laughs> 
She plays a mean violin. Oh, look out. <laughs> your violin strapped to your back. Yeah. Something, okay. I'm getting out of hand here, but <clears throat> I'm inspired. Jacket. Yeah. yeah. Jack, yeah. like tour yeah, jacket. Perfect. Okay. We're yeah. going to find you on a random right. tour. Like our buses will cross paths and you guys will have your bikes. We'll have our scooters, but we'll be like friendly gangs. Oh, I was yes. thinking we could have like a, like, what was it? That oh, you want like a song? rumble? Like, yeah. Oh, could, you're thinking oh, newsy. We could like face each other. It'd be, it'd be cool. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We can have a, a bike off. Perfect. I'm in. It's <laughs> a plan. <laughs> I, I love it. It's funny because I'm so like, I once was very like sporty athletic, yeah. like, but I'm talking once upon time as in like high school, I was very sporty, but now imagining myself doing anything that requires like sporty athleticism. I just, the picture in my mind is so yeah. awkward. Yeah. I played like soccer and um, cross country, like <laughs> cross country literally think, requires the least skill. Oh, you did. Okay. Did you do any yeah. other sports? Uh, okay, I did cross country in middle school. Um, it it actually does require skills. That's why I didn't continue doing it. But I did. I mean, I it's brutal. In yeah. <laughs> it is brutal. It's it's like just shin shin splints. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. You know, it's a funny. This is one of my favorite stories about my sister. Sorry, a total um, little side move right here. But um, my go. sister. Iced her shins so much when she had shin splints. She was trying to get better for like the state cross country meet in time. And she iced her shins so much that she gave herself frostbite. No. Like, no. That's literally fucking <laughs> metal as hell. <laughs> she is pretty metal. Like when yeah. if the doctor says like yeah, ice for five minutes, she will ice for an hour. Mm -hmm. That's just her personality. And yeah, the skin was like flaking off. Oh, no. her oh, wow. <laughs> Cause she got for, so note to self, any listeners, um, by the way, in our discord, my, um, lighting uh, designer just posted a picture of our bike gang from, I think that's like circa 2015. Wow. Um, so I'll have to, I'll send you this picture. It's a, I knew we had one once upon a time, but, yeah. um, anyways, I'm going to, we're going to have to bring it back. I'm, I'm really excited about this new phase of my life. Yeah. Inspired yes. by you. Um, <laughs> let's go. So I'm curious with all of those shows you did and you were like touring your very first tours with some like really big names. I'm guessing some of these were probably people that like inspired you or, um, you know, like sleeping with sirens, or I think you said pierce the veil. Like those are really big bands. Was that surreal for you at all to be sharing the stage with these people or like, I don't know. Do you have any stories from that phase of tour that inspired you or that you learned from? Yeah, I mean, I remember it's so funny because it was like when I was in my high school band, that's who we were kind of listening to and looking up to and being like, oh, man, they're doing really cool stuff in the scene. They're doing stuff that's different and unique. And um, and then eventually when Paris started opening for them, it was really cool. But it was also this um, just kind of, it was just such a good learning experience. And I, mm. I'm really grateful that we got to tour with them really early on and not with um I don't know I just think it was a they were really great tours to start out on and like we just we were taught a lot about camaraderie with your crew and like how just kind of kind of the tour like touring etiquette I guess and mm -hmm. and we're, I'm really grateful because they both bands were so good to us and so like helpful and caring and generous throughout and and that's something that we try and do moving forward with bands that we take out or artists that we take out and um kind of just for like good examples of how to run your tours and how to to tour full time and not piss people off all the time and just yeah so I'm just yeah. really grateful for that they, that was I think the biggest takeaway and obviously we I think we gained a lot of fans doing that and getting to really like do the grassroots like touring full time and not relying on like social media or TikTok. Like we really had to grind it out on the road and meet people at the merch table and meet people by the van after shows and stuff like that. Like it was um, such a good experience and like, I think a really big foundation for what we've done now and what we've created. Absolutely. And you guys seem to have like toured a lot over the years and touring is like, yeah. 
No joke. Like you said, you do have to grind it out. It's a, it's a different kind of a grind than the social media grind. And nowadays yeah. it's rough because you have to do both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like grinding on both sides. It's oh rough. But, gosh. um, it's but it's funny because, you know, it, it is really cool when you get those moments, when you get to be on stage or like, you know, just with your idols or share the stage with people, like you said, that, you know, the band you found yourself touring with was someone you looked up to when you were in high school. Um, yeah. it, it's such a surreal experience, like those full circle moments like that. And we actually had one a few years ago when, I mean, I was, I am like such a huge Evanescence fan and we got to do like a co-headline tour with Evanescence yeah. and like, I was just so like beside myself that we were getting this opportunity and my whole crew, like, the first show, we just really wanted to like be cool. We were like, guys, like be on our best <laughs> behavior. We're we're meeting Evanescence and we're gonna get to tour with them. So we were all just really hoping to just knock that first show out of the park, like to kind of like impress our new friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at this first show, something went wrong with this like this lift that I got on, and it was supposed to lift me up 18 feet in the air and like this giant dress situation. And anyways, it lifted me up just fine. But then when I was supposed to come down, it got stuck and I ended up getting stuck up on this lift for like 10 minutes in the God, no. in air. Yeah. yeah, super high in the air. Yeah. Like my security guard was trying to get me to jump and I was like too scared. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Um, but yeah, anyways, no, I always stayed right up there. Oh yeah. I was like, I'm staying strapped in. Yeah. I'm not moving, but it was just such a funny, like what well, I love funny tour stories because in the moment you're just in such a like up Creek without a paddle moment. That's yeah. my like, yeah. that's coming in. <laughs> but you're just like, I'm like, I have nothing to do, but just live in this moment. Um, but for it to happen on our first day with Evanescence. That was, was my first <laughs> show with you ever. That right. Was my, not only first day with Evanescence, but my first show with you as, you know, the person responsible for this dress. Oh, gosh, what a day that Yeah, was. Fish thought she was fired for sure. But, of course, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, but do you have any, like, I'm sure you have so many, but yeah. can you think on the spot of any funny tour stories or stage moments? Oh man, so many. I feel like fucked up. To so I don't know if I can swear on here. Sorry. Oh, you, no, I see. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. I see the the explicit e next to my name, so you knew I was coming. Um, <laughs> the, That's amazing. No, I feel like I feel like fucked up stage moments are kind of just like this rite of passage that you have to have happen, and anybody who hasn't had them happen, and they're like really far along in their career or they're starting out and just crushing it. It's just like, this isn't fair. You will crumble at some point. <laughs> like it's you're going to get your comments. <laughs> your ass is going to get whooped. Get ready. <laughs> um, no, I think we've had so many like first dates of tour just go so severely wrong. And like, I remember, mm. I think it was, I don't remember if this was our first show of doing the entire warp tour run or if it was when we did like a two week stint I think it was the two week but I remember this was like my manager was or one of my old old managers was like really tight with a lot of other bands that were on the tour at the time and these were all like band, again bands that I like looked up to or was just like oh my god like so and so from so and so is gonna watch the set and I remember our first day he was like going around to everybody that he knew he was like you got to come watch Paris watch Paris and we were like yo so many people are watching and we just had this list of everybody <laughs> that we knew was going to come check out the set and oh, no <laughs> nothing on stage worked like we had none <sighs> of our synth worked we have um we had this ancient archaic machine to use to do like backtracks for like extra percussion and extra synths and stuff that we can't play um and that was like malfunctioning wasn't working they like started things at the wrong time like our click tracks were off like it was just oh no this nightmare <laughs> and i think we played like i think we played two or three songs <gasps> out of however many we were supposed to but it was just like this giant walk of shame afterwards we're like wow. right, oh that sounds horrible we'll <laughs> oh my no gosh, it, was, it was it was bad it was it was embarrassing and i feel like at that stage like I didn't have the self-awareness to be like, don't let people see that something's going wrong. Don't let people know you're upset. I was just like, fuck, man. And just like, <laughs> just, just, just melting on stage. Just needed, pretty much just like short-circuiting and wanting to like eat myself off the planet. 
Oh my gosh. I mean, again, <laughs> those are just such important moments that teach you so much about what it takes yeah. to be a performer. Cause like in hindsight, you were able to be like, okay, in the future, like I'm sure you've handled things much better since then, but also to your credit, like until you've been on a stage where shit is hitting the fan, you don't understand what it's like yeah. to be up there trying to smile or laugh it off yeah. when you're like kind of humiliated. You're just like, whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. oh yeah. I feel like, yeah. I feel like young and it's, there's still a part of me now that's like a part of me wants people to know. And like, I'll make a face that's like, ah, oh, like, yeah, that's not going right. Like, I know that you know that I know. <laughs> yeah, I want you to know that I am aware. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, I don't actually know how this sounds out front, but if it sounds horrible, I know it, and I don't approve of this, and this was not my doing, and this is not because we suck. This is because something really bad is happening. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I feel like there's, like, it's always, like, a hard thing to judge whether do I let the yeah. audience in on this? Or do I yeah. keep this to myself and are they got not the wiser about it? Because sometimes people have no idea that something's wrong. Yeah. Other times you have to be like, oh, no, I'm pretty sure they know something's yeah. wrong. And then yeah. it can become yeah. a thing where you're like letting them in on it, letting them experience it with you. But it's like that hard thing to decide, is this a moment that I let them in on or is it a moment that I stay strong <laughs> and keep smiling? Yeah, yeah. totally. I have still not really cracked the code on on that yet I feel like there's some shows if something's going wrong I'm just like it's fine just vibe no one knows and then yeah like, our tour manager will be like yeah you could definitely tell and there's other times oh. where I'll be like sorry guys or I'll just be like wow this is this is rough and they'll be like yeah we wouldn't have had any idea if you didn't say anything and like nobody knew and you could have just been professional about it and I'm like but they have to know so yeah, I don't know I like the way you said it. They need to know that I know that it's not okay. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they need to know that I didn't approve of this. This is, this does not have my stamp of approval. A hundred percent. Um, well, so I want to, speaking of performing, um, I feel like the pandemic hit artists in such a different oh, way man. than it hit other industries. Like it hit everybody hard in their own way, but it was just a unique experience for like artists and musicians. So yeah. how did the pandemic affect your guys' plans? I mean, we had we had our album pushed, I think, three times initially because of the pandemic and then other situations. But um, it got delayed a bunch. And then I think we, we had touring dates that got postponed like three or four times at this point. And the ones oh. we have now, I think we're – we're actually from like original touring plans from that album wow. before the pandemic and like we're still about to go play them but we're like okay let's call them a different tour now because at this point right. there will probably be a different <laughs> album so it's just it's definitely really confusing and and hard but I don't know like do you when when we're outside of the context of a pandemic and like pre-pandemic times were you were you touring full-time and um like, was that majority of your experience? I used to tour a lot more. Yeah. Um, and I feel yeah. like, like many artists, like, you've just, we've all kind of learned other ways. And I, I mean, I, I love touring, so I hope to do it lots more still. But it's like, I, I feel like pre-pandemic, I used to tour a lot more. Because I'm now I've just been kind of confined to the States. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, what about you? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, I don't, I didn't know how actively you were touring or like if it, like how your balance was with it. But for us, it was very much, um, that's like the number one way we mm -hmm. have a job and like, and make, yeah. make a living is, is performing and touring. So majority of my adult life was spent on the road and touring or flying around mm -hmm. to work on albums, whatever it was. So it was definitely obviously like an adjustment as a whole as like how to operate a business but it's it was I think the biggest adjustment was just like and still is kind of something I'm working through now but just like okay who are you without this really fundamental yes. thing um, oh, yeah. and I, I realized that more and more like I think traveling and having that freedom and that independence really is such an integral part of 
how I feel like myself. And I don't necessarily know if that's a healthy thing, but that's something I'm kind of learning to work through at the moment is like, okay, if you can't do this full time, who are you without being gone nine months out of the year? And like, what do you want to focus on? And what makes you Mm -hmm. happy? (laughs) Yeah, it it was weird. Yeah, that is something that Fish and I um, have talked about so much. Um, That exactly what you said, without touring and without my work, like, what am I? I think we really bonded over that when, you know, April of 2020, both of us kind of looked at each other and went, oh, no, who are we? (laughs) You know, like, what do we do? And a year later, wait, wait, who am I? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What do we do without our our tour buses and our, our audience and It was Mm -hmm. a wake up call. Yeah. I'm curious, what was it that like helped you through the last pandemic worth of years or however (laughs) many years it's been, but (laughs) what is it that you feel has helped you like with that, like that mental health side of things? Um, I mean, number one is just kind of taking it day by day, but the, I think the other things that have been really helpful are like, I I try and journal daily and like do daily pages. I try and get out and walk, um, exercise with weights, um, trying to get in nature as much as possible, get as much vitamin D and sunlight. And um, those were like big parts in the pandemic. I think that were really helpful. Like, okay, here's how to not completely lose your mind and still feel kind of stable. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And then I think a big one, I think when, when everything just turned to like internet, internet, internet online was kind of limiting social media. And at the moment, I'm not really on it just because I feel like working on the album's priority and I don't have anything to say until it's coming out. So limiting Mm. social media was like a big thing and and actually just kind of like like I have this little private account that I use that's just for like following artists that I like and Mm. creators and just like stuff that is like feels like nurturing that's not like perpetual doom doom scrolling or just more things to trigger your anxiety um right so that's (laughs) that was like really good Mm. but now I'm at this point where I feel like I've been away from it so long and like I'm getting this weird pressure of like okay you have to go back on it it's almost time (laughs) what are you gonna say (laughs) who are you gonna be does the world even remember who you are do they even (sighs) care and so there's like all these weird little like anxiety such real fears, by the way. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I've been a little quiet. Yeah. Like, and then you realize, oh, it's only been a week, and I feel like I've been gone a, a millennium. Like, what the heck? Like, have they forgotten me? Or, or maybe it has been a year. Like, yeah. does anyone on the in the world remember my name? Um, yeah, you know what. I, I think the answer is a thousand percent. Yes. I, you should see all the discord, like all the comments that we're seeing in the discord, like people freaking love you. Yeah. Like, oh, and I love them and I miss them and I, and I, <laughs> I will be back guys. Oh, and everybody's here. Everybody's waiting for it. You know, and I, <clears throat> I had an experience where like, I'd never taken a break from social media, you know, up until I think it was like 2016. My dad was really mm-hmm. sick with cancer and I decided I was going to take like, two months and like stop working, stop doing anything. And you know what? It wasn't going to be two months. It was for as long as my family needed me. I just went home and I kind of went silent. And when I ended up coming back to my life and, you know, getting back and writing music and getting back on social media, it was amazing that everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I'd never taken a break before. And I remember just kind of, as I started to come back to it being like, Oh, is what's going to be left? What kind of a rubble situation is this forgotten city? But everything was there. And it just makes you realize, I feel like we artists put so much pressure on ourselves to constantly. And I, I still do this to this day to like constantly create and constantly be making something. And you know, I wonder, like, so much of that is probably just in our heads, but. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so much of it is, I think, just our our generation and the society that we're in now, like, I, I think capitalism is to blame for literally everything. So, like, right. there's a reason we're all like, I'm not doing something, so I'm going to die. Or, yeah, right. I'm worthless. <laughs> whatever, whatever, like, narrative we want to tell ourselves when we're literally taking space for, like, nurturing our selves or creativity whatever it is whatever you're pausing for but um 
yeah, I think that's like, that it, it is this crazy, crazy, crazy mind game you kind of play with yourself where it's like, okay, I know that it's important to step away and like, know yeah. and trust the process and know that every step of this is valuable and taking time to figure out your opinion and your thoughts on things and like what you're, what you're about and taking that time to do that is okay. And it's really important rather than like just posting things without an intention or just like kind of, kind of mindlessly trying to keep up, but right. it is, I, it's interesting right now. I feel like obviously I haven't been on, but I've been like, I'm like in the background looking at what's going on in the internet. And I do think there are like some, obviously there's major shifts happening. Like I think, people are shifting to TikTok much more than Instagram. And like, there's all these weird stats coming out that Instagram's kind of like dying and it's all going to TikTok. That's the most like traffic platform at the moment or the highest traffic platform. But Mm -hmm. it's just like, it's trippy. It's really weird. (laughs) Who are you without the internet? How is your TikTok game? I'm curious. My TikTok, uh, what's your, game, yeah. <laughs> my TikTok game is is currently non-existent. I made like a well, personal not one now, just for, in general. Yeah. Oh, like just as a as a viewer on TikTok? No, no, as a as an artist on TikTok. Oh, it's non-existent. I don't even have there's no oh. artist profile yet. I think oh, somebody wow. else has actually taken it, but I will soon be on it once oh. things are up so and, Fish literally just pulled up her, <laughs> as you were talking, <laughs> Fish pulled up her phone, found you, followed you, and then as you said that, unfollowed. <laughs> She's like, there's not the real one, there's no blue check mark, get off of there. <laughs> Whoever it just is, giving out follows for free, we're going to find, <laughs> we're going to wait until you have a real account, yeah. and then we're going to support like crazy. Um, Thank you, likewise. Well, <clears throat> if you all, ever, all, yeah. this is a standing yeah. offer, if... You know, and I like have this joke that I'm a TikTok expert. I'm not. I, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time studying the stupid app. And yeah. um, sorry, not stupid, everyone, not stupid. It's I a mean, great app. Yeah. Um, but uh, so anyways, if you ever want to have a, a TikTok day, you just let me know. This is a standing offer for when your album comes out and you're ready to come back into the world of social media. Yeah. <laughs> what does a TikTok day mean? I mean, I'm, I'm open to this, but I just, I just got to prep. What, oh. what does this entail? Well, I will send you some of the ones we did with Amy. It will either terrify you or you'll be like, I'm game. This seems fun. Yeah. We'll just have okay. some plans and we'll we'll make some videos to promote your song. And we'll film them on iPhones with <laughs> tripods. And it's really high tech. And um, <laughs> There's a lot of laughter. There's, yeah. We, there's a lot of laughter. We laughed a ton when we did the yeah. ones with Amy Lee. So anyways, that's a standing offer just because I really like you. And anyways, I'm, I'm – Thank you. Yeah, I've learned to like TikTok. So, no, mm-hmm. it's it's so funny because I do like it. Like, I my my partner has her whatever her for you pages is like so freaking funny. She's like right? crafted it to perfection. I'm like, how did you even <laughs> get this out? Al- or like whatever, how did you get this algorithm? I don't know, but it is so good. I'm like, how do I get my for you to look like that? And I don't know how I'm going to exist on this app because this is the stuff I want to see. And I don't (laughs) think it's going to work like that. Or I don't think I can make stuff like this. Oh my gosh. No, it'll, it'll, you'll figure it out. And with that being said, your newest track, I believe, well, I'm not sure if this is the most recent one, but one of your most recent ones, it's called monster, right? Yes. Is this a part of the upcoming album or is this like a standalone track? This is those so monster and my way they kind of came out around the same time. Those are I I think standalone and I think technically legally they have to be standalone because they were um, mm-hmm. released through Warner, which we are no longer on. So I don't know the legalities of that. Mm-hmm. If we wanted to put it on an album, um, but I think they're standalone. I feel like I feel like the new album has a lot more. There's just there's just more on on the new album that will be there, and Monster and Milo will be there as well. Awesome. Well, if you don't mind, I would like to play Monster because it's such a cool song, and it's it's a really like who produced this one? So this was uh, produced it with J T Daily, and it's really fun because it there's a lot of elements that seem really electronic, like there's mm-hmm. a lot of drum sounds that sound like it, but almost everything except 
there's like a kick and then kind of like a hip hop snare. And then I think there might be, I think it's the 808 or the sub bass that's happening, but everything else is all like live instruments and, and samples really? that we made ourselves. Yeah, but it sounds wow. really like, sounds very electronic and sounds really, like it's a lot of programming, and but a lot of, a majority of it is actually live instruments and like live drums. We use like a Mentos, can not a can but like a mentos um i guess a can what a canister a mentos yeah, canister yeah. for like the snare and like water bottles for the hi-hats and just like oh, a dang. bunch of weird shit so there's a lot of fun like behind the scenes sounds that are there if you can awesome. listen in and maybe find some but yeah so jt daily produced it he's he's so fun to work with we had a blast making it and yeah, there's a lot of just fun little production treats like that that I feel like amazing. Know. Well, now I'm excited to listen yeah, to it even too. more to like hear the stuff. So this everybody is monster. Woohoo! Okay, that was really fun to listen to that after hearing you talk about like all the sounds. I was like listening yeah. for it, and I bet that song's so good live. Well, have you done it live yet? Yeah, we did a tour in sept or uh, August into September. And we got to play that one live and it's so fun with just like adding kind of more instruments to it live and having like a full drum kit behind it. Cause it just hits even harder and it's, it brings that oh, yeah. up even more. So yeah, it's, that's like one of my favorite ones. Did you know? Oh, I bet. Actually, um, I want to back up a second. I, I had a thought cause you said you released your album <clears throat> um, in 2020 and some of the songs are so beautiful on that album. And I was curious, did yeah. you feel like that album got its like a full chance or like you got to have it live its full life? Because I feel like so many artists that release music in 2020, like never fully got to express the work. And then they just had to kind of like move on. Yeah, it's interesting because it's also sorry if you can hear purring. My one of my kitties <laughs> someday just knocked up on my lap and she's oh, really struggling oh. right now um so sweet so she's she's Never a little home. guest as well <laughs> she's so cute hi sunday um yeah this little purr oh, <laughs> yeah, she's, like, she's like a little motorboat um oh, she's so sweet. So cute. but yeah i think it's interesting because the process of making the album and kind of the behind the scenes of it was just like it was like our first time on a major label and trying that out and just kind of giving mm. it a whirl and I definitely think there was there was just a lot of weird malfunctions and miscommunications and things just just like kind of didn't line up properly so by the time that it had come out it had been delayed like three times and at that point mm. I was just like create like the pandemic was very it was a very heated moment in the pandemic and I think like there's just a lot around it that I think was much more important than our album to be quite honest and it's not that it didn't get its chance to to thrive but I, I just like what I know now looking back on it and kind of just the place that I'm at now as as a creative versus then I think I've learned so much and just like grown so much through that experience that I think if it had done really well and it had kind of taken off, I don't really know if that's like the album I would have wanted it to have mm. really popped off on or whatever like that. So I think, I think it just was what it was. And I've, I've been pretty like at peace with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think like, obviously people have listened to it and enjoyed it. And I think for the time, I'm glad that we were able to, have an album out that if, if anybody is going through a hard time or just needed it, it was still there and they could enjoy it and listen to it and connect with it. So I, that's like the most important thing at the end of the day anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a really good point that you're like, you know, you, you didn't necessarily, you wouldn't have loved it if that had been like your biggest album. Like, cause I feel like sometimes we release things that have a season and other times we release things that are like, this is just me through any season. And yeah. um, 
you know, and it's it's nice when fans kind of choose the songs that are the big songs because they choose them, you know. Yeah, and yeah. It's nice when you're like, yes, that is that is a song that I want to play a million yeah. times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I think the songs on the album that I would have wanted to do well or like see stream the most or have people sing the loudest when we perform live definitely are the ones that. I felt really close to my heart too, like songs like Dead Weight and Use Me. Um, those were like the top two. And then mm. everything else was also obviously loved them and was happy that it was out. But those those were two that I was really rooting for. And I was really glad that they seemed to, from the, from the analytics and from the statistics <laughs> online, like those <laughs> seemed to have done pretty well. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm glad that the stuff that resonated the most was what did the best, I guess, from that standpoint, at least, or that perspective. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Um, and I read that you had over 45 songs for one of your albums that you took into the studio to record to like narrow it down for your album. Um, yeah. So do you usually have that many songs for an album? Um, kind of. Yeah. There's like, like I said, I work on Logic a lot. So any any idea, whether it's 10 seconds or a full fully structured and fleshed out song, like everything gets taken into consideration when an album's mm. being made. Like I'll, I'll, even on this album, working on this one, I've, I've gone back to as far as I can in my hard drives and old folders and Dropbox links, whatever, like from stuff that were songs in the running for the second album like I've def I definitely go back and oh. I think everything has a moment and every mm -hmm. every time is important but that being said I don't think any old ones have made it on to this album but yeah I think I think it's important to like keep those and revisit them and kind of kind of weigh out all options and even something that's 10 seconds could spark a whole idea if you play it to the right person or like you have the right producer in the room, whoever it is, uh, or the right mm -hmm. collaborator. Um, so yeah, I try and have as many ideas on deck as possible. <laughs> like I think for this album, there's probably at least like 20 to 30 ideas started. Um, and now it's, and I'm still working. I'm still trying to find like the remaining, I'd say like four to six album, four to six songs on the album, but there's like, already a lot that has been yeah. started a lot a lot to choose from a lot that have been like pretty fleshed <laughs> out production wise but now it's just kind of going in and being like okay this seems like the vibe for the album this seems like the story mm. this seems like the message now it's kind of trying to find resonate or start new ones that kind of help it feel like it's a fully formed body of work and yeah he says and like all kind of tying into each other and it belongs. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I can't wait. I'm so excited yeah. to hear like what next sound you're working on. Um, and you know, it's funny as you were talking, I it made me think about, I've definitely had it before where a song I almost cut from the album, like almost said mm -hmm. like, never mind, that one's not going to make it um, kind of turned into like a fan favorite. I've had yeah. that happen like several times. Like, have you ever had that where a song you didn't expect was kind of picked by the fans as like one of theirs? Um, let me think. I definitely, I don't know. I probably. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It does make me think I'm like, shoot, maybe there's other songs that yeah. I've thrown in my trash can that could have been like favorites, you know, <laughs> but yeah. maybe I just don't know my fans well enough. Cause I feel like usually I'm pretty spot on with like, Oh, this is going to be loved by the fans. This one's you know, yeah. not going to be a favorite, but it's good. You know? Um, but every once in a while they'll surprise me. And I'm like, I thought I knew you <laughs> just when I thought I had you all <laughs> figured out. Um, but, um, <clears throat> So uh, I am curious, I guess, when are you hoping to have your music done for this album? Do you even have a date yet that you're hoping for? I will not say, I can't give any exact dates, but like there is very much 
a deadline on my end and on like the internal end that we have as far as picking out the songs, having them like ready and produced and ready to go. Um, And that is like around late fall or I guess early fall, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, But that's kind of like, yeah, there, there, there are deadlines that are starting and there's very much new music on the way and, things are being planned and I just can't say anything yet because God knows that's how smart. many times I've, <laughs> yeah I'm just like no, that's there's smart. so many there's so, so many times the artist yeah. code by asking you that question I was like that yeah, wasn't no, no, a cool it's question cool, cool. <laughs> yeah no, no, no. um okay last thing I want to pick your brain on a little bit is your music videos are so visual. They're very striking. There's a lot of like symbolism in them. I feel like even though sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but I know it means something to <laughs> her. Um, so like, is your approach to making visuals very similar to your approach to writing or how do the music videos come yeah. to be? Yeah. So most majority of our music videos, I'll, I'll usually come up with like the, the initial treatment and mood board and, um, I'll, I'll put together references and try and make it as like clear and concise as I can. And so like with the first album and the second album, it was very much that, um, I would, I would kind of have like the baseline concept and then, um, I would go to our director and be like, mm-hmm. okay, this is what I want to do. And he, and him and his production team would be like, okay, this is impossible to do because we don't have either the tools or the budget for it. So we have to find our way around this story thing. of my life. Like, say related. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I feel like, I feel like I can't be in are space. Like, are you kidding me guys? What, <laughs> what do you mean? Every time. No, no anti-gravity. Come on. Um, so yeah, I think that that was like always kind of been the process. And then with the last album used me, I was a little bit more open to kind of, having other people propose video ideas and then we kind of would like form them together and finalize everything and be like, okay, these shots will be in it, this concept, this idea, blah, blah, blah. Um, and like, kind of like that. And then for this album, it's kind of going back to the original way, I think, which is I'm kind of forming the mood boards and the concepts and the really like loose timelines of them and whatever, whatever's going to be happening in them. And then, the next stage is kind of finding the right people to collaborate with and direct it and help produce it, finding the right production teams and stuff. So it's, I think going back to that a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's always this, like you have to surrender to the reality that like we don't have million dollar budgets and you have to sometimes get scrappy and resourceful. And, but I think that's, that's when a lot of the magical stuff can happen is when you, when like something gets cut or you don't have the budget for this location or this thing and you kind of have to make do with what you have and you have to think on your, on your feet and just adapt to it. And I think that's, that's half the fun of it as well. Right. I think there is something fun to like that scrappy nature and, you know, and it's like, I don't care how big my budgets eventually, you know, hopefully get, but it's also like, I love being very hands-on. Like, it's fun to kind of figure out the way to make it happy. Like, well, we can't have that, but we can do this, or I could make this, you know, or there's something that's kind of grassroots and and fun about that. It just feels very creative. Um, I feel like you and I are very much cut from the same cloth in that way. Yeah. Do do you have the same approach kind of with, with your visuals and the music videos and whatnot? I do. I mean, I you know, kind of when you were talking about the way in like junior high, you found like, you know, music software and you were using GarageBand. That was me with editing software and like camera equipment. And so I was like making little videos with my besties when we were like, you know, 14 and like editing music videos. So still I love like making costumes and, you know, like location scouting and figuring out how I can make a backdrop. Like, you know, it's just, it's, like I said, that's sometimes a little bit of the challenge, but also the fun. Yeah. Of like, how can we make this really cool when we don't have yeah. a million dollars? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that really just makes like, I, I love that you do that too. And that's something I always really love and respect when I know and hear that like another artist is as hands on as that. Cause like 
that really is, I think, what, what sets you apart and what separates artists from each other a lot of the time is, like, the more hands-on you are and the more, like, yeah, I don't, just the more hands-on you are, I think the more authentic it is and the more it translates, like, what, what your vision actually is and, like, what you're about. And people can, like, pick up on that. And it really is, like, that's, like, the most potent version of yourself that you can put mm. out into the world. I think I always, like root for people to be doing that when like artists direct their own videos or they, they have like a big hand in that. Um, just, every, yeah. I, I guess across the board, even, even just with like the actual production of the music and yeah, totally. No, it's I very poetically said, I like how you said it's the most potent version of yourself. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that's a quote right there. I like it. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's true. Cause after hearing you talk for the last, like, thank you so much for spending so much time with us, by the way, cause after hearing you talk, it's just, it's so evident that like, you are that kind of artist and you are like, you know, just so fluidly Aww, throughout all the you. different projects you've done through all the different years and the videos and the, you know, the pictures from the live tour. It is so, so you. And anyway, so I just, you know, thank you so much for like all your inspiring words and just this wonderful conversation. And before we lose you though, is there anything else that you want to tell us about, you know, anything else you're excited about or you want the fans to know? Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate just getting a chat with you it's super cool and I hope we can chat again and as far as mm, things for listeners to know I guess it just hold tight there is there is a new album happening and on the way and mama's putting it together so she can <laughs> <laughs> really oh gosh, can we be best friends time. you guys are the yes. same person I, I think we are the same person um I'm gonna dm you and we should go on a hike sometime or I don't know Dude, I was just gonna say like we should go on a hike or something so cool perfect yeah All that's right. my, my favorite your, LA activity yeah okay I think that's well, the best you, way to hang out I think so. Well, you're awesome. Thanks again for your time. You've been absolutely delightful. And I hope you have the best day with your panda bear dog and your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Lindsay and Lindsay. Um, hope you. to chat with you guys again soon. Have an right. awesome rest of your day or e I guess it's evening for us now. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, thank you for everybody for tuning in and thank you for having me. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. All right. You too. Bye. Okay. Oh my gosh. All the applause. Everybody's applauding. That's so nice. Um, she was delightful. Yet another person who I feel like is so cool. I know. So cool. That's probably my favorite thing about having this show is the fact that you and I get to meet all these yeah. really cool people. Right. And because they can't like see us and see our <laughs> awkward mannerisms, they're kind of like, they can't see that we're sharing a headset. <laughs> We're literally like leaning together. This to... is like the closest, like you and I are like shoulder to shoulder right now. Luna's going between you and me. It, this is the weirdest, but I'm here for it. Yeah. Like I said, no one can see, no one can see us. what dorks we truly yeah. are. And it's funny because we started this chat out today by talking about waving yeah. your freak flag high, oh, yeah. but there's certain parts of my freak flag I want to warm people up to, yeah. like just yeah. kind of how sometimes I'm a little bit tacky Yeah. in like things. Yeah. Like we I, all are. I consider myself a very classy human, but with like a, like a trashy side. <laughs> that sounds not, no, tacky, yeah, tack, tacky, tacky, tacky is the right word. Better, yeah. not trashy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop myself by playing a song. Um, this is from their last album or her last album that came out in 2020. Um, and it was my favorite song off oh. the album. It wasn't one that she said was her favorite, but I've already programmed it in what? here. So there we go. I'm going to play it. I really like it though. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's called Loveless. Right. <clears throat> oh, such a good song. That one's like so yeah. relaxing, which is again, why I say that like all of her music, they it very much ebbs and flows in different styles. Like yeah. that song is so different from the one we just right. listened to, but it's like still very her. I'm a fan. Anyways, um, we were just talking. I was like, I'm, I'm so excited. We're going to go hiking and she's going to be my new best friend. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if she knows this, but I'm, I'm wow. stoked. And thank you guys all for hanging out with us again. I love Wednesdays. I look forward to them. I, I consider it like this little hang time. Like yeah. we all just get to, it's almost like a little living room chat. Cause I am sitting in my living room. Literally 
Sit on the floor. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know why I always end up on the floor. Do you I work mean, from the floor? I do. Yeah. I don't like sitting in chairs. Like when I eat I my dinner, I sit on the floor. Me too. At a coffee table. Yeah. That's why, I mean, little fact about me. I don't own a dining room table <laughs> because I don't want to waste the space. And I, because I, I always sit on the floor and eat. Probably because I'm a yeah. single lonely woman. It's I just, fine. I mean, I'm not <clears throat> single or lonely. I do it too. <laughs> Oh, so I can't blame that. Okay, never mind. Um, oh, but also, I like working from my laptop on the floor. When I, yeah. I don't know, I just I don't like desks. Yeah. So that reminds me of when we were at Disney World and you and I chose to eat our lunch that day on the floor, and everyone kept trying to offer us their seats, and we were like, No, 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 we oh, right. we want to sit on the floor. It, right. This is fine. <laughs> I was just trying to trace that memory in my mind, and I was imagining us in the park oh. on the ground, and I'm like, Where did we eat on the ground? I'm like, Oh no, no, you're in the in the dressing room. the dressing room. Yeah. Yeah. for the performance yeah yeah that was funny because yeah. I, I was also in like a dress yeah so everyone's like oh please please yeah, madam table. take my seat and we're like no it's no, okay no, we i we like, like it this. down here yeah <laughs> that's funny well oh gosh love you all thanks for being here um go check out more of paris because freaking awesome and there's so much good music so fun um, and we also have a really exciting guest next week and i can't remember which one we have several lined up do you remember next week is going to be Probably just dancers, right? Yeah. No, I think we have a guest oh, for the next, next few week, weeks. Next week. Well, um, then I am unsure. Well, anyways, you'll have to, you're just going to have to wait and find out. Stay tuned. I'll announce it soon, but we'll be back next week. Same time, same place. See you guys then. Bye. Bye.